is going to be fun, people. Aaron Rodgers was a bad man last night, throwing for five touchdowns and zero interceptions in the Packers' 38-28, excuse me, 38-28 win over the Chiefs. It was the fourth time in his career Rodgers threw five passing TDs, and he now has gone 16 regular season games at home without throwing an interception. Rodgers has the greatest TD to interception ratio in NFL history of quarterbacks who have at least 1,500 attempts. And you may have heard about the other guys on this list. Second, Tom Brady, then Peyton Manning, Tony Romo, and fifth, Steve Young. You know what, Stephen A? The floor is all yours, my friend. Take it away. You know, it's interesting, it's interesting that you highlighted those things. I definitely appreciate it, particularly that last stat with TD to interception <laughs> ratio. I have to listen to my compatriot across that table, whether it's via satellite or sitting right across from him in studio on far too many occasions, listening to his drivel about how Aaron Rodgers is not that bad of <laughs> a man, word. how he talks about Tom Brady. It's so disgusting, so nauseating, <laughs> so insulting, so disrespectful. Disgusting. I have decided to put Skip Bayless on the spot you with a simple question. I believe that Aaron Rodgers will go down when all is said and done. He will go down as the greatest quarterback in history. Talent-wise. history? I believe talent-wise. Talent-wise. Certainly not yardage with Peyton Manning, the great fathers of the world, even Tom Brady, people like that. But talent-wise, talent-wise, I believe right now Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback I have ever seen. With that in mind, Skip, I have a simple question for you. Give me five. You don't even have, I'm not talking about, I'm not even talking about the present. I will give you history, the history of the National Football League. Give me five quarterbacks right now who you believe is better than Aaron Rodgers talent-wise. In history, okay, okay. I dare you, the floor is yours. We got to define this question. Because you threw in the little tricky oh, cave caveat there about talent-wise. Is it I've not been saying production? That uh, when we talk about quarterback play, isn't it what you did when it really mattered the most? Isn't that what that we would define skip. quarterback greatness? Or we just do an eye well, test well, you talent? Can you, skip, skip, skip. You, skip, you can define. All I'm saying to you is this. You can define it any way you want devoid of championships because Dan Marino never won one and we all know he's one of the greatest ever. John Elway won two and the last two he won before he retired. That's when he had Terrell Davis. But we all know how great he was. Fran Tarkenton lost four Super Bowls. Jim Kelly lost four Super Bowls. But we know how great they were as quarterbacks. So we ain't talking championships, okay? Because that doesn't define your greatness as a quarterback because this is a team sport. I'm asking you, omit that category. The floor is yours. Give me five quarterbacks in the history of football okay. better than that man, Aaron Rodgers. Here we go. Okay, so I, I need to remind our viewers up front, just for the record, that the baddest man, says Stephen A., Aaron Rodgers, is 6-5 and five in the postseason. 6-5. and five. That includes four straight wins as a wild card team to win his lone Super Bowl. And since that Super Bowl, long ago, He's two and four in the postseason. That's the guy we're trying to make this Let case pause. for. Okay? That's right. Let me pause before you get into that. Tom Brady went the last ten years without a Super Bowl until yeah, Darrell Reeves arrived last year. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. So right keep now, going. just to stay current, obviously I'll take Tom Brady any day of the week especially on Sunday, over Aaron Rodgers. Because Tom Brady is 21-8 and eight in the postseason. And he Thank has you, Bill four Belichick. rings, four Super Bowl rings. And Bill Belichick should, should drop down on his knees and thank God every night that Tom Brady fell into his lap in 2001. Next on my list is obviously okay. the greatest quarterback ever right now, Joe Montana. That, that's probably going to be eclipsed by the great Tom Brady. But Joe Montana has four Super Bowl rings with a 16-7 and postseason record. And if you want to talk about tap dancing in the pocket, you want to talk about beautiful ballet feet, this man had them, Joe Montana, and had a whip of an arm right there with Aaron Rodgers to me, to my eye test sight. Now, number three on my list is the great John Elway, who has two Super Bowl rings and a 14-7 and postseason record. And you don't remember this because it was before your time. John Elway could flat out fly out of the pocket. He was a sensational early career athlete who learned that it's probably best 
to stay in the pocket and later in his career to hand off to your guy TD, right? Mm -hmm. Terrell Davis, because that's how you win Super Bowls, and he won two that probably could have been three if he'd come back for one more year. But I'll take him over Aaron Rodgers. And then number four on my list is a guy who could run rings around Aaron Rodgers, those great feet of his. Roger Staubach, as clutch a quarterback as I've ever seen. If I have one game for my life, I want Roger Staubach to start that game. They called him Roger Dodger because he could just escape and run and take off and sprint down the field. He had RG3 in him early in his career until he learned you probably can't survive that way in the NFL. Roger Staubach has two rings and an 11-6 and six playoff record. So now that's four. And then the fifth guy on my list is this guy that you always disparage on this show named Brett Favre. Do you remember him early in his career? What a stud athlete he was. Could he not make people miss in the pocket? Could he not run down the football field in ways that Aaron Rodgers never thought about running? Brett Favre had the strongest arm in pro football early on. Brett Favre won three straight MVPs. Brett Favre did win only one Super Bowl, but at least he's 13-11 in the playoffs, which I think is a little better than 6-5 and five that Aaron Rodgers has right now. Maybe someday Aaron will get to 13-11 and 11 because that's the track he's on. But I'll just throw in Brett Favre because you're talking about talent, pure talent. Nobody had a cannon like Brett Favre's for the first six or eight years of his career. So I just gave you five off the top of my head. I didn't even throw Marino in there. But if you just want to do eye test, just pure arm talent, nobody had more arm talent than Dan Marino did, including Aaron Rodgers. So I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm embarrassed we're doing this question. Thank you very much. Well, you should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed, but not over the question. You should be embarrassed by your ridiculous, asinine comments that you just made, so disrespectful towards the greatness of Aaron Rodgers. Let's the go greatness? down the list, Skip Bayless. Let's keep in mind. Let's keep in mind that coming into this season, his career, career stats, Skip, his career passer rating of 106 is number one. That's number one. You look at his completion so percentage. Yes, it is. Oh, well, well, I do. I do. I'm sorry, you don't get Good. to speak Take for me. Zip it. You had that's your fine. moment. It Zip bank. it. I'm talking. <laughs> Chicka, that's right. Point number two, completion percentage. Career, 65.8%. Yeah. Wow. The touchdown rate is 6.5%. Wow. His interception rate at 1.6%, Skip Bayless. I mean, you talk yards per attempt, number three all time at 8.2. Now, let's look at this. Let's go down your list. Let's go down your list. Because we, we ain't going to even bring up Tom Brady because we know you and I ain't going to agree there, okay? We ain't going to agree there oh, at so all. That's fine. Let's go down your list, Skip. He doesn't to, count. No, no, I'm okay. saying we, we, we disagree because what I'm saying to you is this. Tom Brady's been around longer. He's been starting longer. He's been in the same system. The level of continuity that he has had with Bill Belichick, the way Bill Belichick seems to continuously get no names and make them look great on both sides of the football, I think is a Tom testament Brady to his greatness as a great. coach. Julian just, Edelman, a seventh-round that. quarterback? That's You're why, kidding that me. That is why, that is why, that is exactly why you and I disagree right there. That's why I say I ain't going to get it to him because I said on both sides of the ball, Bill Belichick is the man. You can sit there and say what you want, but you're going to sit there and give Brady all the credit. That's fine. We've argued about that enough. Let's, let's get something fresh. We got Montana here. Ooh, I got to admit, the four Super Bowl rings can't be denied his greatness. Joe Cool, okay, under pressure. I get all of that. So I, I, I can sit there and debate it with you, but I can tell you that even though Joe Montana could scramble, I never saw him throw a football the way that Aaron Rodgers throw a football. But that's fair because he's Joe Montana. All right? So I'm going to concede that you might have a point there. Not Brady, but Montana. But here's where you make me laugh. Elway. Elway was it as great as he was, and no disrespect to Elway, as great as he was, even you were willing to admit that we didn't see the Super Bowls until Terrell Davis arrived. Not to mention the fact that whether it was because he was throwing too hard, acting like he was playing outfield for the New York Yankees instead of quarterback for the Denver Broncos, there were some times when, t when John Elway, what this completion percentage wasn't that high, where receivers may have been dropping his passes, yeah. and there were times he didn't produce. There were times he didn't produce, okay? So now he, let's he get to Starbucks. He got two other teams to Super Star Bowls, okay? Just for the record. He got two bad teams to Super Bowls and got blown out. 
Go ahead. That's fair. All right. That's fair. So he got annihilated. I guess I guess he got annihilated, yeah, especially by the Redskins. But that's fine. That's fine. But then I'm looking at Roger Starbuck. Okay, he was a champion. You don't miss. You don't miss the Navy. Love him. Love his service to our country. Good, great man. Uh, is a phenomenal businessman since he was stepped away from the game. But here's the thing about Roger Starbuck. 22 career thousand, 22,000 career passing yards. Okay, are you ki are you kidding me? You can talk about what he did. His numbers don't even compare. And by the way, he was buffered by the doomsday defense of your Dallas Cowboys. Let's not forget that. Plus, he had he had great players with them: the Drew Pierces of the world, the Tony Dorsett. Be of the like, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So he's he's a Hall of Famer, but let's put it in perspective. Now let me get to my last point because this is just absolutely hysterical. Brett Favre, you mean the Brett Favre with the career 62% completion percentage? That's you mean good. the Brett Favre who's thrown three? Hold it. You think the Brett Favre who's thrown 336 interceptions in his career in 20 years has the same amount of Super Bowl championships Wait. as Aaron Rodgers? And you're going to tell me ever. he was better most than Aaron Rodgers? ever. That guy. Yes, that guy. Yes. He does. He does. Let me just skip. I'm going to say something to you that you might consider very much. You thought I was disrespectful before. Allow me to sit here and say this to you. I'll give Brett Favre all the credit in the world for being the Iron Man that he is with those consecutive games played. He certainly had big moments. He was a gunslinger and made big plays. He made big mistakes, too. I'm telling you right now, Brett Favre doesn't even belong in this conversation with Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Not even in this conversation. Last question. Back to you. Not even in this conversation. As a, as a young quarterback, which quarterback had more talent, Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre? Just on pure, raw, God-given talent, which one has the most talent? I don't think that's a fair question. I don't think that's a fair question because Aaron Rodgers was sitting on a bench for four years. What? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Say it again. Aaron Rodgers was sitting. Aaron Rodgers was sitting on a bench for about three or four years. Okay, but so just, what I'm just, saying to you okay, is his a, first year starting, j just as a young player, who had the most talent? No, his first year, no, no, his first year starting, his first year starting, there was nothing that he did was comparable to Brett Favre. Second year and on, yes, it was. Brett yes, Favre, it was. more talented than Aaron Rodgers as a younger player. Nope. Yes. You, well, you, you, you just, just said it first. If you're going to take Aaron Rodgers' first year, if you're going to take no, Aaron just, Rodgers' just first year, a, after that, yeah. At a comparable age, at, at whatever, you know, 28 years of age. More talent, Brett Favre. Yes. You yep. just don't remember you're Brett too young. Brett Favre could never throw the ball like this dude. Yes, he could. Oh, no, I'm not too young. You're talking about too young. You're too I'm young. I'm in college when Brett Favre Guys, was playing. We, we, we have, have to go about? to break. We have to go to break. Stephen A., I appreciate you coming up with this question. This was tremendous. We could do a whole show on this. Just to recap, skips five quarterbacks better than Rodgers in history, Brady, Montana, Elway, Staubach, and Favre. We asked you guys earlier, we wanted you to weigh in, if Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the NFL using the hashtag, ha hashtag excuse me, best NFL passer, and here are the results, 65% say yes, agreeing with Stephen A. Skip likes his back against the wall like the Patriots anyway. 35% saying no. Up next.